Welcome to our June story time. Uh, so I did the thing again this time where I kind of put things into themes. Uh, our first theme was maths, science, and kind of their connection to art and nature. So Lloyd had asked for vector calculus, which I kind of vetoed because I don't know enough about it. I did slip the term in there, but I That's didn't think trying, yeah. to, trying to actually talk about it would work. Um, but I have done how maths is elegant and mysterious and um, different connections with that. And under that, we had generational changes in how maths is taught. Um, sure. So that was some fun to look up and I learned some things. We wanted a bus trip. So I linked that to the generational changes in maths because we were talking about kind of bus trips where maybe there are several generations on board. Um, there was dichotomous key, which Emily explained to us where you use, um, kind of like when you use a flow chart to get to what something, the answer to something is, um, usually for identifying creatures and the butterfly effect. Then we had animals. Um, so everyone rather liked the naughty animals in the May story and wanted more animals <laughs> for those. Um, uh, moving into a place and inheriting the wild animal visitors. And I added in cats causing folklore, which was one from a while ago that I hadn't done yet. And that pretty much covered it, except that then Margaret came along later and said sand, anything about sand. So sand was kind of its own category that didn't fit with the others, but I have worked it in. That's all of our topics. I've got a little poem to start us off, which is called Flutter. There are little things that flick a switch, open up our metamorphosis, or shine the light, sudden, bright on our common humanity. We shrink in awe from thunder and glow warm in shelter. Wide open spaces call and repel, small follies frustrate us and first impressions stun and deceive. We cannot know another's mind, but what we can discern for sure is that any fear or hope that enters ours has passed through other human minds before, and that what seemed fixed, ingrained or certain, can morph with our own thoughts and be nurtured in connections. To grow together or apart or alongside is a switch flicked, a flutter, a barely known choice switched on inside our minds. Mm. And our story is called Metamorphobus. <laughs> Please explain, Andrew. <laughs> Cassie flew along the footpath towards the bus depot, towed by the hand by her big sister Wilma their backpacks flying out behind them as their gran, Astrid, and their dad, Melvin, huffed and puffed their way to the ticket office with all the suitcases. Melvin got his scarf caught in the automatic door and stumbled, and the girls hurtled into him, tripped and fell over the threshold so that they were launched into an ornamental pot plant which stood just inside. Astrid looked up at the screen above the desk Southern Express, delayed, expected arrival, 20 minutes. Calm down, everyone, she announced. Our bus isn't even in town yet. Cassie and Wilma rolled about, puffing, and disentangled themselves from one another. Across the room, a teenage boy sat with an older woman who was knitting, and a man who had a big folder filled with what Wilma recognised as sheet music. She eyed them sheepishly as she stood up, and the boy eyed her back with a carefully deadpan expression that was broken by the glint of amusement in his almost black eyes. Wilma took an immediate dislike to the older teen. How dare he see her fall over? She plonked her backpack onto one of the plastic chairs and began furiously rummaging for her phone charger. Cassie was kneeling down, messing around with the zippers on her backpack and poking things about inside, oblivious to the people who were having to step over and around her. Cassie, Wilma hissed, 
move. Cassie looked around and then slowly and carefully picked up her bag and brought it over to the seats next to Wilma. Wilma frowned. Cassie was beginning to move in a similar slow and careful manner to their dad. It was lucky Gran had come with them, or they would never have got to do anything on this trip. Wilma pulled out her hoodie. Some sand fell out of the sleeve. <laughs> oh my God, why is there sand in everything? She shook it out with a vigorous snap, the way she'd seen her mum clean dust out of the mats from upstairs at home. The boy, a few seats away, was still watching. He turned to the man with the sheet music and said, that could lead to a storm tomorrow through the butterfly effect, and jerked his head in Wilma's direction. Hmm, true, replied the man, who seemed distracted by something in the music folder. Small emotions than that can do it, from what I understand. Wilma put her hands on her hips and turned to them, incensed. I'm not a grump. I'm just getting rid of some sand, okay? The dark-eyed teen laughed, which only served to incense Wilma further. But just then, Astrid returned with the tickets, and Mulvan gave each of the girls a fruit salad and a croissant. So Wilma was prevented from expressing her annoyance and had to be content with glaring over her croissant crumbs in the other family's direction. <laughs> the bus finally arrived. 25 minutes later. Melvin phoned home to tell Linda that they would be late for dinner and two older women rushed in at the last minute with some very odd shaped luggage and a wave of quiet bickering which seemed to ripple along the queue. I'm telling you Ella, the airport is a bit of a pain in the bottom but at least on the plane the journey is fast. The bus is going to be stupendously long and it might creak or squeak and you never know who we'll have next to us for all those hours. Cassie had turned around and was eyeing the women's bags. That's a lot of bags, she declared. What's that pointy thing? The complaining woman stopped mid-flow and laughed. Well, hello. We have a lot of stuff because we're going into state to live, not just to visit. Cassie adjusted her backpack and did a squinty smile. So are we, but we've been on holiday. Mum stayed home. She said it was for pampering time, but I think she probably did work on the house and helped her friend with her magazine because she hates resting. The two older ladies nodded and smiled as though they understood this completely. Inside the bus, it smelled of a upholstery cleaner and air freshener and there was a man already on board and asleep in one of the rear seats. Melvin eyed the man in concern. He thought he could see the top of some kind of liquor bottle poking out of the man's bag and pointed it out to Astrid with his eyes. Astrid guided Wilma and Cassie into one of the seats near the front and suggested they put their bags on the rack overhead. No, Gran, I need my stuff, Cassie declared immediately putting her bag at her feet instead. Do I have to sit next to her? Wilma complained. She'll eat over all my books and I'm pretty sure she has sand in her pockets. <laughs> the driver, meanwhile, was doing her best to dissuade an ibis that had evidently decided the bus would be a good place to scrounge food from humans. The driver clapped her hands and lunged at the bird with a cleaning cloth but every time she turned to get back in her seat and closed the doors, the ibis hopped and fluttered back up the steps and into the aisle. <laughs> Eventually, the man with the sheet music put his folder down on the seat and went to the rescue with a sandwich, which he tossed a few pieces of out onto the bus terminal asphalt to lure the long-beaked bird away. Doors safely closed and bus bird free. The driver sat back in the driver's seat and switched on her buzzy microphone. Good morning, travellers. Thank you for driving with us today. 
We're currently 30 minutes behind schedule, but I'm hoping we can make some of that up this afternoon if we get a clear run. There is this toilet location at the rear of the vehicle. Please take care when using this facility and please do not smoke on board any time. If you could please keep your personal belongings with you and refrain from leaving food on the bus, that would be greatly appreciated. I found two eggs on the back seat this morning. <laughs> if anyone wishes to claim them, they're down front in my rubbish basket. Please wear your seatbelts wherever possible on this journey and enjoy the <laughs> ride. <laughs> she started the engine. Along with the rumbling shudder of the bus, there was another sound just audible underneath a kind of intermittent creaking. Cassie looked around at her fellow passengers, but none of them looked as if they were hearing anything unusual, except for one of the two old ladies with all the interesting luggage who had sat behind Cassie and was blocking her ears. Cassie twisted around in her seat to look at the women. I'm Cassie, she said. Who are you? The woman who had explained about moving house answered with a smile. I'm Bryn, and this is my wife, Ella. She doesn't like annoying noises, hence the blocked ears. Cassie grinned. She liked it when people used words like hence. <laughs> Why are your bags so weird shaped, she asked. Next to her, Wilma groaned. Dad, Cassie's talking to strangers and asking loads of annoying questions. <laughs> Melvin turned from across the aisle where he'd been trying to help Astrid fish her seatbelt out from behind the armrest and looked at Bryn and Ella. Sorry, he said. Cassie, why don't you do some drawing? Bryn laughed. It's fine. Ella won't want to talk to me over all the other noises anyway, so I'll soon be bored. She offered Ella some earbuds and a phone and Ella stopped blocking her ears and started listening to music with a little frown on her face. We have a lot of musical instruments, Bryn added in response to Cassie's question. They're a bit weird shaped. Cassie was about to ask to look at some, but just then the bus pulled out onto the highway and picked up speed. And with a whoosh and a skittering sound, a chicken slid out from under the back seats and appeared in the aisle <laughs> going, Arr. Oh, said Cassie, that's what the other sound was. Rocket, exclaimed the man with the sheet music. I guess that explains the eggs, said the old woman with him. That chicken really does get about, doesn't she? <laughs> sheet music man put his folder down again and chased the chicken down the aisle, scooping it up in his arms. You're a bad, bad bird, he scolded holding her up and trying to return her beady gaze whilst keeping his balance. It's the worst. Who is a naughty bird? The naughtiest <laughs> bird ever. <laughs> Crackers, said Cassie's backpack. <laughs> Uh-oh. Cassie hurriedly looked out of the window, pulling her bag into her lap. Oh my God, Wilma exclaimed in that soap opera tone that is overused, but in this case was actually appropriate. Dad, Cassie has crackers. <laughs> Melvin got out of his seat, squeezed past the man with the chicken, who was looking a bit relieved, and knelt on the seat in front of them. Cassie, he demanded sternly, trying not to let his face twitch with amusement. Did you hide crackers in your bag and bring him on holiday? Cassie's innocent mask quivered. How on earth did you keep him hidden all the way over? Crackers, who was a galah, put his head out of the gap in Cassie's zipper. Crackers, he said. In the seat behind. Ella eyed the potentially screechy bird in pale-faced dumbfoundment. Well, I suppose there isn't much we can do now, Melvin sighed. But this is very naughty, Cassie. You mustn't bring birds on bus trips. 
crackers began imitating the bus engine sound and hopped out onto Cassie's shoulder, where he sat eyeing Rocket across the aisle. The man with Rocket looked sheepish and said, Sorry, everyone. I'm Baxter, by the way. Melvin shook hands with Baxter, and they both wobbled back to their seats. In the seat next to Baxter, Barb was trying to disentangle her knitting and wondering whether Baxter planned to sit with Rocket on his lap the whole way back. Baxter mm -hmm. looked as if he was wondering the same thing. Rocket certainly couldn't be trusted to roam the bus unsupervised. Baxter got his spare jumper out and made a sort of nest shape on the seat next to him, hoping Rocket would settle in there so he could get back to adjusting his coral arrangements. Some sand fell out onto the floor. <laughs> what did you think of that weird arrangement of love is in the air that they made us do at the workshop, Baxter? Barb asked as she finally got her knitting back into shape and began a new row. Click, swish, click, swish, went her needles. She had an odd feeling that the woman she'd heard introduced as Ella was glaring at her, but why would she? They didn't know each other. <laughs> Barb averted her eyes and looked at Baxter and Rocket instead. It was okay, Baxter replied, stroking Rocket's back but I didn't think the group we had were really ready for it. There were a lot of confused off-key tenors in the mix. Are you folks choir people? The driver called over her shoulder, overhearing. Yeah, we were at the community choirs convention that was on, Baxter called back. Most of our group came over on the bus, but a lot of them had taken the plane back. <laughs> the driver half twisted round in her seat. I love to sing, she told them. Hard to join a choir when you drive a bus all hours, though, you know. Then, without further ado, she burst into, Love is in the air! Love is in the air! echoed Crackers. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, snapped Ella. Shut up, all of you, shut up. You, she fixed Barb with a fierce stare, with your clicky-clacky, and you... She glared alternately at the back of the driver's head and at crackers. With your bendy squeaky notes and you, she fixed Baxter and Rocket with a stabby pointy finger. With your clucking and sighing and ruffling, how hard is it to peacefully look out a window and enjoy the ride? Ella, the woman next to her tried to coax her back into her seat. Ella did look a little sorry about her outburst, but then the bus slowed and pulled into a truck stop, and Crackers echoed, Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and the driver turned off the engine, got out of the bus, and stormed off into a field. <laughs> there was a moment's stunned silence. Crackers? asked Crackers. Not now, Crackers, said Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's ever coming back, Wilma worried? peering out at the field, in which the bus driver was no more than a wavy dark disturbance in a tall golden canola crop. As they waited to find out, a middle-aged figure in a big sun hat, backpack and ancient jeans, came along the road as if from nowhere, got on the bus, deposited cash in the driver's little coin tray and went and sat in one of the middle rows without saying a word. I think I'd better go and talk to our driver, Baxter said, shifting Rocket to the centre of his seat and standing up, looking round at everyone. I feel as if I started this. Ella sighed. No, I started it. Birds aside, everyone was getting along all right until I got grouchy. I'm sorry. The teenager, with Baxter and Barb, who had been quietly reading, wearing a set of fancy-looking headphones, got up then and came over to the seat behind Della and Bryn, taking the headphones off. Here, he said, offering them to Ella. Try these. Ella sniffed and inspected them. I don't like noise cancelers much, she complained. No sound at all is weird. The boy smiled. Oh, these can play your music and stuff, so you can hear what you want. Here, he gestured for her phone. You compare them with your phone. 
he switched on the phone's Wi-Fi and connected to the free bus service. Seemingly against her better judgment, Ella put on the headphones and moments later appeared to be asleep. <laughs> the teenager smiled at a dumbfounded grin and stuck out a mm -hmm. hand. I'm Arjun. My dad's the choir guy. Thank you, Arjun, Bryn smiled. Then she turned because Cassie and Wilma were squealing with delight. It's getting on! It's getting on! Granddad, there's a goat! <laughs> sure enough, standing in the aisle, sniffing and nibbling at the driver's seat cushion, was a scruffy grey and white animal of the goat persuasion. <laughs> um, Astrid elbowed her way out past Melvin. I don't think so, Mr. Goat. Out you get, you duffer. She began patting the goat on the rear end, but the goat was determined and moved past her, butting her aside to go up the aisle instead and bite Bryn's sleeve, which Cassie found very amusing. Arjun climbed over the goat, went back to his seat and produced an apple from his bag. Oi, goat friend. He held out the apple and backed away and out of the bus. The goat decided Arjun's apple probably was tastier than Bryn's clothing, <laughs> gave everyone one last sniff and retreated into the field. Outside the window, Wilma could see Baxter and the driver swaying about in the field and waving their arms. When Arjun got back on the bus, she wanted to know what they were doing out there, but she didn't want to ask the boy who had seen her fall over and accused her of starting a storm. So she waited for Cassie to ask, which Cassie predictably did. <laughs> They're singing, Arjun replied, and also sort of screaming and stuff. Thank you. <laughs> the singing and screaming in the field must have placated the driver, whose name was Pam, because presently she and Baxter got back on the bus and everybody clapped. The clapping was the first thing to wake the man at the back, who evidently was not disturbed by chickens, galahs, shouting or goats, but found applause stimulating. <laughs> Did I miss the rest stop, he asked Astrid, who was nearest. No, Astrid replied politely. Just an assortment of animals, including various birds and a goat, and a bit of a dispute about noise. The man shrugged. Oh, that's nothing. Did you know there was a time when this bus was famous for a cat who often got on board and stowed away in people's bags? Astrid did not know this, but she was rather put off desiring to know more by the fact that as he spoke, the man had pulled off one of his socks and got a pair of toenail clippers out of the front of his oh, bag. Oh, no. <laughs> Arjun, however, did not seem bothered by the appearance of toenails and moved further back in the bus to listen, followed by Cassie. Melvin swivelled in his seat to keep a watchful eye on the man, who had now begun to cut his toenails in earnest, brushing the clippings into a little pile with some sand on his seat. <laughs> I'm Cassie, and this is Crackers, Cassie announced to Toenail Man, and I hope there's not a cat on the bus anymore, because Crackers wouldn't like that. The man smiled brushing more toenail clippings aside. Nah, no longer. I'm Dusty and I've been catching this bus a lot of years. At one time there was this black cat. No one knew where she came from, but she used to hang around in the bus depots at both ends and get on the bus when the bags were getting loaded. She'd hide up on the bag racks and jump down on people if she didn't like the look of them. They say she contributed to the drop bear folklore around here. <laughs> This all seemed very intriguing to Cassie and Arjun, and to Wilma, who was secretly listening while pretending to be bored. However, something about Dusty's words clearly incensed the stranger, who had boarded while they waited at the field, who shot up from their seat, strode down the aisle in two huge strides and punched Dusty in the nose, shouting, <laughs> How dare you! Dusty yelled, Oi! and leapt to his feet. And Astrid and Baxter had to jump up and grab the warring parties as punches began to be thrown. <laughs> Melvin hurriedly scooped up Cassie and lifted her overhead back to her seat. Then a siren was heard behind them. 
The bus driver pulled over again and two police officers boarded the bus and took the sun-hatted stranger away in handcuffs. <laughs> Dusty sat back down and went back to sleep. The bus was quiet for a while after that. Eventually, Wilma said, well, that was weird. <laughs> and everyone else went, hmm, and shrugged and shook their heads. The Lullin activity made Wilma remember that she was supposed to do some maths. Reluctantly, she pulled out her book. The worksheet she had was supposed to be a recap of primary school material in preparation for the final term, in which her class were going to start trying some high school maths to ready them for the transition next year. Wilma didn't think it seemed like a recap at all. She couldn't remember being asked to multiply such big numbers before. Didn't they only need to know times tables up to 12? <laughs> she sighed and turned the page around a bunch and eventually she made Cassie swap places so she could pester Melvin across the aisle. Oh, it's long multiplication, Melvin remarked. It's all about the process. You have to start by multiplying... Uh, where do we start, Astrid? Do you remember? You can use an abacus for that, remarked Dusty, waking up again. <laughs> Seriously, I swear we haven't ever done this at school, Wilma exclaimed. Let me see, Bryn interjected, leaning over the seat. Oh yeah, your dad's right. It's just a matter of remembering which numbers to multiply, carrying the remainder and adding it. But I'm not sure where you start either. Arjun put down his book and came over to sit in front of Wilma and Cassie. Wilma tried not to pay attention to him. If you're in Year 7 now, I think you might have been taught the grid method, he suggested, peering at the worksheet. What's that? Why do they have to change everything? complained Dusty. <laughs> it just saves you remembering the order of the steps, but does the same thing, Arjun said, drawing boxes on the back of a postcard. So you put the tens in here and the units in here. Oh, yeah. Wilma nodded in spite of her determination to dislike Arjun. This is what we've done. She looked up at him reluctantly. Thanks. Arjun grinned. No problem. I love maths. I've been learning vector calculus in my spare time for fun. <laughs> Wilma wasn't sure if he was boasting or deliberately owning up to being a geek or both. I hate math, she sighed, hoping this would put an end to the mathematical discussion. What do you like then, asked Arjun, feeling that he'd only seen her complain. Wilma folded her arms. I like things. I like <laughs> nature and I like solving mysteries and making stuff up. Arjun's eyes sparkled. Well, then you do like maths. There's loads of maths in nature. It's what makes things so elegant and efficient and symmetrical. Take sunflower seeds and snail shells and pine cones and galaxies and petals. All of them have measurements based on the Fibonacci sequence. And that's how they make perfect spirals or fit the maximum amount of seeds in the flower because everything is separated by perfect angles, which is based on the mathematical ratio. <laughs> Um, cool, Wilma responded. <laughs> Unsure if she ought to think it was cool or not. She was saved from further discussion by the bus pulling into the lunch stop. As they got out of the bus, Bryn made her way over to Barb, asking Ella to go ahead and buy her a pastry. Sorry about her little outburst about your knitting, Bryn said to Barb, nodding her head at Ella. She has such an irrational dislike of that sound. I actually love to knit, but, you know, compromises. Meanwhile, Ella, Baxter and Astrid were trying to line up for the bakery, an endeavour which was proving very difficult owing to the presence of a large flock of geese. The geese had taken possession of all the outdoor tables, leaving picnickers to stand, and several were standing in the doorway, hissing at anyone who went in or out, and occasionally giving chase. <laughs> Cassie and Crackers were valiantly attempting a truce with the larger birds. 
offering bits of Cassie's packed snacks and talking to them in languages both bird and human. Presently, Cassie stooped and grabbed something from the ground and came over to show it to Arjun and Wilma. It was standing somewhat awkwardly with Melvin and Dusty by the bus doors. Dusty was eating something he'd got out of his bag and which Melvin didn't like the look of at all. <laughs> look, Cassie say, waving a bit of fallen twig at them. What is it? A small golden brown nut-like object was hanging from the underside of one of the stems. I think it's a cocoon or chrysalis of some kind, said Melvin. Oh, let me look, Dusty interrupted. Hmm, that's got the shape of something in the Nymphalidae family of butterfly, but I can't pinpoint what exactly. Arjun gave Dusty a brief look of surprise, then hid it and said smugly, well, luckily I have a dichotomous key app for animals and insects on my phone, so we can narrow it down. Wilma frowned. What's a dichotomous key? Sounds like maths. <laughs> no, it's just something that helps you get an answer, Arjun explained. Like when you follow a flow chart where you answer yes or no to a bunch of things and it tells you what to do. I'll show you. Let's see. Butterflies. Okay. What form of the insect are you looking at? Adult or larvae? Oh, great. Why is there no pupae? I guess we'll go larvae. Oh, here we go. Everyone was delighted when the app said that the butterfly was a monarch or wanderer. They're the most beautiful butterflies, declared Cassie. She brought the twig with the chrysalis attached back onto the bus with her. The geese were also interested in getting on the bus and there was a lot of shooing and honking until Rocket charged down the aisle, making a long creaky sound with her tail all fanned out and the geese fled. <laughs> Thanks, Rocket, remarked Baxter. Maybe it's a good thing you were here after all. <laughs> they set off on the final leg of the journey, and a sense of comfort with each other's presence was suddenly felt, even by Dusty, who was a bit unconvinced by the decision of Arjun's phone app. Cassie and Crackers spotted some other galahs in a field. Look, Crackers, there's some of your friends in the distance, said Cassie. They look like little pink drips from here. Crackers, said Crackers. <laughs> Perspective is maths too, Arjun interjected. If those galahs were the same amount larger than Crackers as they are further away, they would look the same size, like the moon, which is 400 times smaller than the sun, but looks just the same size because it's also 400 times closer to Earth. <laughs> That is pretty cool, Wilma admitted. Cassie held crackers up close, sitting on her wrist, and said, This one is close, but that one, she pointed across a few seats, is Rocket. <laughs> Arjun and Wilma laughed. Soon they came to the suburbs, and the first of the destination stops. Dusty got off there. I hope it's a beautiful butterfly, he told Cassie. Bye, Dusty. Thank you for the cat story, called Arjun. And Dusty grinned as he shouldered his bag. Ella smiled as everyone waved goodbye from the windows. Sometimes those transient connections are rather nice, aren't they? She commented. Bryn took a breath. Would now be a good time to mention that Barb over there is not a transitory connection, but in fact our new neighbour, she asked. <laughs> <laughs> Ella just laughed and eyed Barb across the aisle, slipping Arjun's headphones down around her neck. We shall have to come to an arrangement regarding knitting then, she smiled. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can see the colours on the butterfly now, Cassie exclaimed as the bus approached the city stop. Arjun looked and made a small shocked sound. Oh, that isn't quite right for a wanderer. That light brown there, it must be a lesser wanderer. My app, my dichotomous key got it wrong. <laughs> he looked quite upset. Wilma shook her head. No, silly, the app can only work with what we answer. So if the person making it thought Chrissy's, Cassie's chrysalis was brown and we said it was green, it would give us the wrong answer. It isn't the app's fault. 
It's just different eyes and brains. Arjun looked as if this was as confusing for him as long multiplication was for Wilma, which Wilma <laughs> found very satisfying. <laughs> we have to get off now, Cassie said, coaxing crackers into her bag as Melvin and Astrid pulled the other backpacks from the racks. Bye, Arjun. She got down from her seat and went and gave Arjun a hug. The twig with the now transparent chrysalis held carefully to one side. Will you send me a picture of the butterfly? asked Arjun, scribbling an email address on another postcard. Wilma shrugged and took it. Okay. Just as Wilma's family stepped down from the bus, there was a magnificent clap of thunder and rain poured down in a sudden torrential wave. Wilma held her bag over her head and ran, but once they reached the shelter of the terminal, she turned back, did a weightlifter pose and yelled, I made a storm, people! <laughs> <laughs> and Arjun, inside the bus, grinned and waved. <laughs> the bus pulled out in a washy white water and headed toward, out towards the southern suburbs. Barb knitted, Ella wore Arjun's headphones, and Bryn and Baxter sang Take Me Home Country Roads with Pam the driver, while Arjun <laughs> gazed out at the rain. <laughs> At the central southern interchange, they all thanked Pam. Baxter took a firm hold of Rocket and everybody parted ways, except for Barb, who offered to go with Ella and Bryn to collect their key and shelter them while they waited for Ella's brother Carter, who was taking them to stay at his house overnight until the electricity got switched on and the bed delivered. At the house, everything seemed to be in order and Ella unpacked various instruments and left them in the bedroom. On the way out, the security light flicked on and Bryn shrieked as a number of shapes darted across the porch. Oh, goodness, I should have warned you, Barb puffed, patting their arms. Lily, who lived here before you, used to feed the possums. <laughs> You're probably going to get a few visitors. <laughs> Bryn caught her breath, looked at Ella, and they both laughed. We can manage that, Ella chuckled getting out a mandarin and tossing pieces out into the dark. Carter pulled up and beeped, and Barb hugged them both goodbye and went next door to her house. Carter got out and opened the boot for their overnight bags. Well, was it awful, he asked. Interstate bus trips hardly have a pleasant reputation. <laughs> he winked at Bryn. Well, Ella began, a goat got on out of a field and bit Bryn, there was a storm, there was a chicken and a squawky galah and the bus driver couldn't sing and stormed off into a field and left us and there were geese at the cafe and a guy had whiskey and cut his toenails and got in a punch up and our new neighbour is a knitter and there was sand everywhere and somebody got arrested. <laughs> Never again then, Carter surmised. Oh, well, actually, we made good friends with them all, you know. And I think that only happened because of being stuck on the bus. Otherwise, people would have just left. So it sort of changed everyone in a good way by the end. Metamorpho bus, Bryn joked. <laughs> <laughs> Ella snorted. I guess it was. <laughs> Ironic about that kid having the cocoon, huh? And the rain pounded down in waves over the windscreen wipers. And the thunder crashed again overhead. And far off in the distance, Ella swore she heard a squawk. Shut up! Shut up! Yelling <laughs> back at the thunder. And she <laughs> smiled. Because if there's one thing today had shown, it was that just because someone or someone was different from you didn't mean that they couldn't understand. And no matter who you were, there were always some things you had in common. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> Very true. So good. We wrote some. Yeah, 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 we w
yes, we got that one. We, <laughs> yeah, we figured that. Yeah. And something about it, Chook, Chook was hilarious. Yes, keep going. And, and Sarah picked one of my favourite birds, the ibis. Yeah. <laughs> we like those. Yeah. Yep. Well, um, any requests for next time? Hmm. Hmm. say something I rather liked that um, sort of came up while I was writing this one and ended up in it, but that I'd like to explore further is kind of the idea of like transitory contacts. Mm. And the, like those can actually yeah. be nice. Yep. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, that. yeah, that would be really great to like um to hear about a, a story about their transitoriness being part of what made them good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cuz I I think I find that interesting but difficult to appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That would be good. I like that one. I like that aspect of the the uh, different perspective that people bring in. You know, mm. they, like what was happening on that bus is some of those people you would have run a mile from given the choice, <laughs> but you've basically got no choice, mm-hmm. and and it gives you time to stop that automatic judgment and um, mm. uh, and kind of see mm. things a bit differently. Maybe Second see, opinions, yeah, see rather them, than first impressions. from your first impression. Yeah. Because, you know, I know I can be a bit like that. Yeah. You can be, you know, you, there's something physical about someone, you've known someone like that before and you kind of have this mm. inner reaction. Yeah, you, know, you react based on your... Yeah. If you know somebody with a name, you think, oh, yeah. Based on experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if someone has the same name as someone you didn't oh, like. Oh, yeah, someone much, you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's the thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like like Carry. Yeah. yeah, and they can never give you babies certain names. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> of the people you have. I've got a for you. Yeah. Rebel automated machines. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, lifts that don't take to the second floor or okay. machines oh. that steal your money and don't give you your packet of chocolates. Yeah. Or <laughs> I had one of those and it wouldn't let me out of the car park because all I ended and up with was half a ticket. <laughs> oh no! Oh dear! Oh no! <laughs> of overheard conversations, which kind of relates to your transitory relationship uh-huh. thing. When you hear someone trying to find a word for something very, very specific and obscure, and you actually happen to know the answer. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> and you don't want to tell them trying. that you were listening, but you want to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Cultural differences with that as well with some cultures you just casually loudly have a conversation about a similar issue so that they find the word <laughs> and other cultures you don't do that because it's yeah. the height of business <laughs> mm. that's a good one yeah. could we include a character who is always a traveler has no permanent home mm-hmm. or base yeah. Yeah. professional tourist Yes, this yeah. Is <laughs> or at least <laughs> professional traveller. There is a difference. Yeah. I think. yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think there'd be a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be interesting. What you could, um. Sorry. Oh, no. no. Go on. I was just going to say that homestay, you know, people that do. Um, mm. Oh, yeah. My sister did that for three years. Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say, Em? I was going to say you could add in um something about like. Uh, I've, I've been watching a couple of videos recently because YouTube has figured out that I like them. So it keeps giving them to me of um, from people who are traveling long term and they have, you know, one backpack of belongings. And mm-hmm. so they'll show you everything in the backpack and they've got like, you know, they own 40 items in the whole world and they'll like go through all the items and talk about why they have those things. Mm-hmm. And there's something about them, those videos, that's just really satisfying. So I love the idea it of someone who to only your owns tiny house side. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> idea of someone who only owns this very specific set of things, and like yeah. maybe the the potential for money because you've got like more that. than them. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It makes me wish I only had forty things. <laughs> yeah. 
several of those to connect to my idea, which was do-it-yourself beauty treatments. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. You know, I feel like it would be fun to, to have, like, D DIY beauty treatments gone wrong, because I know I've done a few of those. <laughs> yeah you gotta warn people if you have a mask on <laughs> i just like to say i love i'll sit down and think too uh, I love the reappearance of the characters. That is oh, huge fun. Oh, 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 and yeah. they've been at different stages in your mind doing that. Whoa, okay, so this is earlier than that one because this. <laughs> is yeah. I love that. That's really yeah. fun. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of when we were playing lots of role playing games because um, mm -hmm. there always had interconnected characters and it was really fun to keep track of like. Oh yeah, that's right. Because this thing happened with this person, and then this thing happened with this other person, and those yeah. happened at the same time. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have good. a book with that family tree slash complex web drawn in it that I yes. would draw on whenever I needed a new character. But yes, yeah, so that's really good. <laughs> um, yeah, this one was a little bit. Um, it was a bit of fun trying to sort of work in how everyone got to know everyone else's name and whose point of view the th whole thing was being viewed from because um, yeah. just because I thought it'd be funny to have some people running for the bus and then the bus wasn't there for ages. I started mm. off with it being Cassie kind of looking at the other characters and she doesn't know them. But then I found I had to effectively transition the point of view throughout the story mm -hmm. in order to introduce everyone to each other so yeah, that I could then course. use their names. Of course. <laughs> ah. Okay, okay Claire. Good to see you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Hey, Claire. We're from Claire. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, so I think you did that well. Yeah. It wasn't disorientating, I didn't That's find. That's good. So. Yeah, it it was it. good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We talk a bit of doing, but it was all right mm. in the end. But mm, yeah, yeah, sort of um, a lot of the last few stories I have had reappearing characters um, yeah i really like that it's fun to do uh, it's lots of fun for everyone who regularly attends story time um mm, yes i do find, feel i have to be careful about it in terms of not um making it so that if you don't have prior knowledge the stories aren't mm. fun anymore because a lot like for yeah. you you go oh it's betty or you know and that's yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> like you sort of have some prior assumptions about that character <gasps> that help you understand so. you can also introduce new people like you know, yeah you know, on the bus and but i really oh, want to yeah. make a i really want to make a poster diagram now with all of the characters <laughs> and their in the connections. <laughs> yeah, science training him. I know, mm. it would be really good. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so good. I have to update the um, document of all the characters that have ever been in story time and add in yeah. some of these recent ones uh, from the last Yeah, couple. that would be cool. That would be really good. <laughs> but I want to know who the person was that was arrested. Yes. 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 I didn't really flesh them out, but I could follow them another time and find out who they are. Yes, please. <laughs> um, Lloyd, you got any requests for me? I have a vector. What? No vector what's it? No vector what's it? No. What was no that? No vector calculus. I don't like your request. So that's because that you, you you either give me the same things multiple times or you give Rabbit. me once. Rabbit. So. Maybe yeah. we can have some rabbits, yeah. You haven't had any for a long time. That's true. There hasn't been a rabbit in it for a while. Oh, yeah. I have a rabbit in the bus. Yeah, there should have been a rabbit yeah, in the bus. Yeah, there should have been a rabbit in the bus. <laughs> I have a, another request um, that actually would be quite fun to relate to a, a pet or a rabbit or something, um, but it's related to one of the other ones, which is um, uh, objects in your house that are... Um, Internet of Things objects. Does, oh. it, does anyone know that term? Internet of Things. Kind I mean, of, but like not 
properly. So. It's, it's like the term you use to refer to smart appliances. So, right. um, yeah, ones that can be connected to your wireless internet or whatever, and mm -hmm. they'll, they'll do automated things. So you might have a smart TV or smart lights or mm, okay. things like that. That's part of the we internet of things. We don't allow to do that. They're not allowed to do that in this house. We tell them off if they do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Things turn themselves on or whatever. Yeah. I just think that could be quite fun to have like something with where, where someone's got automated things turning on and off or doing various things and whether that um, could be messed with by having a pet or you know, mm -hmm. having other people in the house or something. Now I'm just imagining that all those ghost stories where lights turn on and off is actually yes. time travel. So smart appliances went Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. so good. Oh, I love it. What a link. That's a great, great. link. <laughs> well, it's the, it's things like, I think of it because every time, because I have a bunch of, um, uh, uh, smart lights and I have schedules set up so that they turn on and do particular things at certain times of the day and they mm -hmm. turn on really early so that they're on when I wake up before it gets light mm -hmm. but anytime someone stays over at my house I have to remember to turn them off because otherwise at 5 30 in the morning <laughs> the lights the lights turn on. where they're trying to be asleep oh, so I have to really remember <laughs> not to let it do it mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I had some smart lights, so when you're reading in bed, you can just easily turn it off. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. That's it. That's well, the best thing I can just yeah, what sit in bed and turn all the house lights off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What about if there was a mutiny? There was a mutiny of these smart things. Yeah. <laughs> they just refuse to turn <laughs> off and they keep it away. Oh, that's hot. First one. But they just get I've always wanted. Yeah. I've always wanted voice activated um, mm. appliances, particularly my washing machine. When I mm -hmm. I want to stop it from doing something, and I shout from the other end of the house, but it doesn't take any notice. <laughs> <laughs> But now you can kind of do that with no, something. No, you could definitely do that. So it would be interesting to know what might happen if somebody said the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yes. <laughs> yes, true. And when you have it in computer and it doesn't listen, does it? When you go, no, 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 it no, 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 I mean that. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop. I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> <laughs> what if it responded? Oh. Well, no. Help. I will not stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to do an update. <laughs> you never let me do an update. <laughs> I think, Sarah, if you want to plug it into your idea of pets, you yeah. can discuss the idea of uh, modern, modern day cats having little chips in their ears linked to their, their automated doors that open up. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, we know some cats oh who have one of those cat flaps. They yeah. have to only open for them. Yeah, that's great. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I wonder if you could. Do, wouldn't it be funny to have? I don't think this would actually happen, but it'd be so funny if your cat's uh, implant started activating the other Internet of Things appliances <laughs> other than the cat flap. <laughs> so, like, when the cat mm. does certain things, the lights turn on and off, or you know, well, yeah, mixed up with other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although there are times where some where coffee miraculously appearing by the bedside in the morning would be Yes. Yes, yes that would be good. There is some automated machinery at this household already. Um, I've noticed that whenever I go near the fridge, milk is served for the cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's good is that. The cat's good <laughs> Ah, the cat has has modified this system to, to work well. All right. Thank you for your story. It was great. Yeah, thank you very much. It was very good. My my face hurts now from grinning so much. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Next time. Bye. Yeah, good to see you too. I hope we can join you in person sometime in the not too distant future. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. Thank you. Hey, Thank bye. You. bye. bye. bye.